Hi everyone, my name's Kim and I'm one of the instructors at Xamarin University. So this is just a quick lightning lecture to show you the process of creating a screen layout in Xamarin Forms, or at least the approach that I often use, because Xamarin Forms layouts don't have to be boring. What I'm going to focus on is just the layout side of things. So I'm not going to be covering MVVM or data binding, we just want to play around with layout. And the layout that we're going to be creating is a fairly typical profile page you might expect in something like a social media application. And with layouts, there's actually several different ways you can achieve the same effect. What I'm going to use is a grid to layout this. I'm a pretty big fan of using grids. So I find it quite flexible and they handle resizing and different size devices fairly nicely, pretty much out of the box. Now, just to give you an overview of how we'll go and do this, we can segment this screen into a grid with one column and five rows. Most of the rows are going to just be auto sized to their content, except for the bit where we have the profile text, which will make star size, so it'll take up the available space. Now, for the profile statistics, we might use a nested grid in here with three columns, and the profile picture is just going to overlay the first two rows. Also, I should mention you can get hold of this project and some other layout samples over at my GitHub repo, which you can see the address for here on the slide. So let's go ahead and get started and switch over to Visual Studio. I'll start with the Xamarin Forms project that I've newed up. The only thing I've done here was include some image resources for each of the platform specific projects. So if we look, for example, underneath the Android project, underneath my drawables folders, I've got a couple of images, the background, the profile picture, and the curve mask. And I'd include the same resources for the other dimensions, as well as for my iOS project underneath resources. And down in my UWP application as well. When you're working with layouts in Xamarin Forms, the XAML Previewer is your friend. So in order to use a Previewer, the first thing you need to do is do a build of each of your projects. So I'll go ahead and do this. I'll do my Android my iOS. Okay, so now let's go have a look at our main page. And we want to turn on our pre previewer, so view, other windows, Xamarin Forms previewer. And what's cool here now is we've got some real time preview of what we're actually changing. So that's going to save us a bunch of time when we actually go and work with our application. So we don't have to go and basically uh, restart the application every time we want to go. So let's go ahead, put in our grid that we want to use. So we're going to give this some row definitions. We'll give it five different rows. And this second last row, we'll make it a star. That just basically means fill in all the available space. Now let's go and throw in some comments just to indicate which section we're actually working on. One technique that I like to use when I create my page structure is just use box views to basically fill in the space so I can see the shape of the layout without getting too bogged down with all the details. So I'm going to add in a box view for each of the different uh, rows that we have here. I'll skip over the profile image for just a moment. And basically put these box views in, give them some different colors so we can see what's going on. Put them in their different rows. So that's starting to give us a, a bit of a feel for how it's going to be laid out. Now we might just want to get rid of that row spacing that we have there. So come up to our grid, set our row, uh, row spacing to be zero. Now let's have a look at this profile image. Let's put a box view in here. We want to set its uh, horizontal options to be centered. We want to make it a 100 by 100. So we'll give it a width request of 100 and a height request of 100. We want that to be vertically down the bottom of this first row. And then to offset it, we can use something like translate Y. And we can set that to be 50. Now what you can see is that's actually put it in front. So we actually need to copy it and put it down the bottom here. Okay, in order that it can actually overlay those sections. 
and uh, we'll just add a little bit of height into our profile name here just to give us a bit better view of how it's going to lay out. Now let's go tackle these images at the top here. So we'll put an image view in for our background. We want to adjust this a little bit, set our aspect to aspect fill so it fills nicely. Next, let's put in our curved, curved image for the bottom here. For this one, we want it to be at the end, so we'll set our vertical options to be end, so it's down the bottom, and then we'll set our aspect to be fill, so it's going to fill across the space. And we'll get rid of that box view that we have there. Now let's go tackle our profile image. So we'd offer, obviously we want an image view or an image in here. This also is going to be our, our profile picture. Do a bit of uh, alignment here so it wants to be centered. Vertically it wants to be at the end. Just like before we have a width request of 100. We'll put a height request of 100 and uh, we'll offset it using translation Y. So we'll bring it down 50 and we'll get rid of that box view there. So that's looking pretty good there. Next what we want to tackle is some of the text parts and it's always a good idea to create resource dictionaries with styles to help you keep everything consistent and simplify your XAML. So instead of typing all this in, let me go and paste in some styles that I've already created here. There we go. And the basic structure I like to use here, I've got the colors defined at the top, then the font families to indicate the fonts I want to use for regular and medium. I've got my font sizes specified here, and then I've got my actual styles for each of the elements, which brings together the text color, the font family, and the font size. So I've got these for all of the different elements that I'm after in my page. Let's go ahead and use one of these by setting our background color to be from our static resources of background color. Next up is the profile names. For this we'll use, a, no not a label, a stack layout because we have two lines of text. Inside of this we'll have a label. Uh, we'll use the name we had before, Clementine. A second line of text wants to be a little tagline, so hipster coffee drinker. Put this in the right spot and then we'll assign some styles in here as well. Uh, that should be tag, not tab. That's better. Finally, let's add a bit of padding to bring the text down beneath the profile image. So we'll set a, a top margin of 50, bottom margin, or sorry, top padding of 50, bottom padding of zero. Now on to our statistics. So we're going to use a grid for this, uh, an embedded grid. It's going to have three columns in it of equal width. So we'll set up our column definitions. Our width is going to be star, so it's going to be proportional, and we'll split it equally between the three. We'll put this in the right area of its parent grid. Now for each section, we'll have a stack layout because we've got two labels. So we'll put a stack layout in grid row, or sorry, grid column zero. And then we'll have our first label, which is going to be our stats number. So we'll put 33 in here, give it some style.
Turns out I can't spell static resource. So let's add our second label in now. So we'll make this likes and we'll change the style to be stats caption label. And then we want pretty much the same thing for the second and the third column, or column column one and column two. We'll just uh, change the, the actual labels here. And of course, you'd probably use binding in order to do this, of course. And Clementine's got 950 followers, so she's pretty popular. Finally, we'll just add a little bit of bit of spacing here by applying a margin to the top and the bottom. It doesn't really matter, but we could also remove the column spacing here as well. Next, let's throw in our profile description, which is just a, a label with uh, some fake text in it. So I'll just go and paste in some random text. Then we'll position it in the right section, so uh, grid row uh, three. Apply a little bit of style onto that as well. And we'll just throw a little bit of margin here as well. So we'll throw 20 to the left and right and zero for the top and bottom. Lucky last is our follow button down the bottom, which is of course a button. We'll set our text to be follow. We'll put it in the right area. So under grid row four here, give it some style for some, some background color. And of course we don't want it to uh, be right against the edges. So we'll throw a bit of margin in here as well. We'll do margin of 20 around the whole lot. There we are, that looks, uh, looks pretty good. Just for fun, we'll check out how it looks on Android. So that looks uh, fine. Let's have a look how it scales on the tablet as well. That looks pretty good, actually. It's definitely one of the reasons I like grids. They tend to resize quite nicely. But of course, the real test is running it on a simulator. So, uh, or running it on a device, actually. So let's, let's try it first out on an iOS simulator. Yep, that looks that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we'll try it out on uh, on an Android device as well. Oh, that's interesting. A little bit of a um, little bit of space there. So maybe we'll go and adjust the margin just a little bit, just to make sure that that um, curved background overlays the the image properly. Sometimes there's a a slight error in uh, in rounding. I think. Let's give it another go. See if that fixes our issue. Beautiful. Looks good. And finally, let's give UWP a whirl, see how that looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Pretty good as well. So it scales quite nicely on, or renders quite nicely on all three platforms. So there you have it, a pretty basic but nice clean looking layout done just with Xamarin Forms. So I hope you found this useful and uh, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you on a Xamarin University class soon. Bye for now.